We were talking about that letter that the team sent out to their fans and uh, yeah. the transparency of it all and basically saying we're rebuilding here and we don't just want a window. We want to reach the top of the summit and we want to stay there and it's going to take some time and there's going to be some mistakes. Um, we went around the room on this, Ray. My, my interpretation basically is, you know, it's not a tank, but it's kind of like we don't – we're not really thinking we're going to win. And if we don't win and the kids develop, that's the priority. And basically, Taves, Kane, Keith, Seabrook, you're not our priority. Everyone else is our priority. How did you read that? Uh, I thought because of those guys, it was far more complicated than what the Rangers did a couple of years ago, which I thought was fantastic. Remember, the Rangers had had some pretty good years, mm -hmm. and they they sent out a basically a rebuild letter, and you know saying kind of we're not gonna we don't think we can win with what we have, and we've got all these young players coming and we're gonna develop them, but they didn't have the complication of these like the four guys you're talking about, and so at that World Championship site, I actually ran into Jeff Gordon, the Rangers GM, going down an escalator in the rink, and I'm like man, I, I like that letter you guys sent. I mean, like, everybody can see it. And so you treat the fans and your customers like like they're part of the deal, like they're not just, you know, blindly following. And he said, well, was, you know, however he said it, but it was along the lines of, like, you know, that's what we're headed to do, so we thought we should do it. He goes, now I just hope it works. Well, man, they're, I think they've raced down the road. The Rangers have gotten some good players, some young players in a hurry. Chicago won the lottery a couple of times. Yeah, and man. Won the lottery. Like, hey, Pooley, you can be, you know, you're the only one of us that, that's been in the management side of this thing, and yep. you can have the best plan, but it sure helps to get lucky, too. No kidding. Yeah, no kidding. but it's complicated with those big boys, man. It is really complicated because, like, if I'm, if I'm, Doing a show in Chicago, I'm I'm trying to get a comment from Taves, Kane, Keith. Um, now these well, guys they seem to be caught off guard by the Corey Crawford move. That's what yeah. prompted this. Yeah, they did really he, seem to be caught off guard because he'd be. You know what I didn't like the only with the letter, Pooley? One. Sorry to jump in, Pooley. I didn't like that they didn't. They said, you know, we let go a couple of long time Blackhawks. They should have had Corey Crawford's name in there. Yes, right. Like he would deserve like he, that. He, he deserves that. And, and it might be a minor detail, but clearly that letter wasn't written in 10 minutes. And right. somebody with oversight should have said, hey, we got to mention these guys. Hey, you know, he's part of our Stanley Cup teams, a big part. And you just kind of dust them off like somebody that's in and out of there in 10 games. I, I, didn't, I didn't like that part of it either. Well, the I big agree. detail guy there was John McDonough, and he's gone now, Ray. You know, the That's, president, uh, he was the detailed there's a, guy. You know, there's, a lot, there's a lot of change for sure. And, you know, it started with when Joel was, was let go and they brought in, you know, a, a, a coach in Jeremy Colleton who was younger than some of the players. And that's going to be awkward, and that's going to take time. And I don't know if Jeremy Colleton's a great coach or not or a good coach or a developing coach. You know, I don't know enough about him um, to, to really form an opinion, but – there's some awkwardness and some misfit in Chicago that I guess if I'm looking at the other side of the letter, it's that they got to get this stuff on the right, on the same page, but that still leads you back to those four big boys. And what do you do with them? Well, that's it. I mean, and the market would be so different for them all. No one's taking Brent Seabrook. Nobody like well, Chicago's five yeah. years left. Yeah. He's I, at like eight I, something. He yeah. I think, it's, uh, I think it's four, but he's on, he's going to be on LTIR. I think he, I don't know if he, my, my understanding. They have to hope Cooley, so. I think he is going to be, I, I don't think he's yeah, healthy. It looks like that. I, I, I think he's going to be a guy who, you know, unfortunately doesn't play again. And that's a contract that may get moved because maybe somebody wants to pick that up. That would be my only um, interpretation or assumption Okay. Without knowing, I think that one. It's just I. I bring back the other two, uh, Ray, where Brian and and Pooley and I were talking about with Taves and Kane. They've got three years left. They're both still really. I mean, Kane is as good as anybody in the league still at 31 yeah. years old, 32. Like, but are they going to want to ride this out for three years? 
Well, today they are. But, yeah. you know, you get into a year and a half of this and maybe, you know, and I don't, you know, we don't know. We're not talking to them about it. But a year and a half in, if if the if the road looks pretty bleak still, you you might think differently. Like, so they look at look at their goaltending this year. Yeah, like believe me, Colin Delia better be really good. He's not because Kevin. Yeah, well, Kevin Lankin and uh, I watched him at the World Championships. He played the tournament of his life in that, and then he was in the in the American League. And you know, he he's not he's not your number one guy. I forget who the third guy is, but. Um, Delia is the is the one I think they have the highest hopes for. Malcolm Subban's there. He signed a two year extension, I believe, right. at yeah, eight or yeah. nine hundred. But like, I, I'm I'm with you, Ray. Like they're they they may do it by committee, but that's a massive, and I repeat, massive drop off from Corey Crawford. Corey Crawford, even even on a terrible team last year, that a team that gave up so many shots. I think statistically, when you look at you know expected goals and some of the things you do a deep dive. He was like top five. He, he oh, was that good Lainer of a backing him up. Yeah. Like they went from Leonard and, and Crawford. You're going to go to Sue. Probably the worst Delia. tandem in the league. Yeah, so are, right. like, are they yeah. tanking? Like, and is this the year to tank if it's going to be a shortened season with no fans anyway? It's actually not the worst strategy. I just don't know how you sell it to guys who are going to have their, they might as well have their jerseys retired right now. No one's ever wearing 19 to or 88 ever again. Well, like one it's... tank doesn't do it either right now. You, you can't just tank once, hope you win the lottery. And, I mean, you, it's got to be a sell. Now, on those guys' contracts, I was just looking at them, and both of them are cap over cash by about $3.5 million. So the ca- the cash is that much less, which makes them a little more attractive to some teams. For the hit. For, yeah, but for the, hit. the yeah, cap's the not going hit, up either. The... I mean, that... no, but, but, some... but there's one other thing to that, too. It's having the stones to make the deal if you want to. No question. Right. Like there, it's one thing to say, "Oh yeah, we could move them along," but you're gonna, you're Stan Bowman, and you're gonna go out there and say, "Yeah, we traded Patty Kane today for a first round pick and Joe Schmo, a really good prospect, and I don't know something else." Like you want to go out there and do that? I imagine that's not high on your list of, "Hey, this will be a good a day." Top ten score in the league. 